Reusable straws, turtles and stuff. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Marina. This one, she's gonna be a long one. Today, I'm going to tell you all about my time in jail. When I first started making YouTube videos, I was never, ever, 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 ever gonna talk about this, ever. So now it's been about seven years and I'm finally ready to talk about it. Now, a lot of you know me in person, so you might know this story already, but if not, here you go. Please excuse the scribbles all over this. My kid got a hold of it. But this is a picture that was taken when I was in jail. And this is not everybody that I was in jail with. This was actually a church group activity thing. And these are the people that went. Okay, so a little backstory. I had never done drugs in my life, ever. You should have seen how much persistence it took for people to get me to even smoke weed. Like I was, nope, drugs are bad, nope, nope, nope. But then I met this guy that I thought was the best thing in the whole world and if you know who this guy is, no freaking offense to him, I'm sure he is much better off now. We were just dumb freaking kids. I don't blame him for any of this. But if I would have never went and hung out with him, this might not have happened. Let's just leave it like that. So the first time that I go to hang out with this guy, he needs a name. Let's give him a name. And we're gonna call him Tom. Um, I used to have a crush on him back in high school, but we didn't know each other. We had mutual friends. The very first time that I go to hang out with Tom, one of our mutual friends was there also. Let's call him Ben. So Tom and Ben. I go to hang out with Tom and Ben and we get to where we're hanging out. We're hanging out in Ben's garage. He had like a couch set up and a TV and we play video games and all that type of stuff. And we weren't there very long before he said, oh my God, we have this stuff and you have to try it, blah, 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 blah. Again, remember, it took a lot of persistence to get me to even smoke weed. What Ben and Tom had was not weed. What they had was a pill. Its chemical name is oxymorphone. What everyone called it, the brand name was Opana. Opana was a very, 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 very strong painkiller. Like insane. Like I'm pretty sure that Opana is what took over when they got rid of Oxycontin. So it's like Oxycontin, but possibly stronger. I don't know. I've never taken Oxycontin. I don't know. This was my first ever experience with drugs outside of pot. It was this insanely strong painkiller. And you know what I said? You know what any normal freaking person would say? I was like, okay, they were doing it this way. I was thinking like, no, what the heck are you doing? What the heck are you doing? But this is a cool, cute boy. So you know, you gotta impress them and freaking do drugs, I guess. Well, I did the tiniest, itty bitty, tiny, 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 little itty bitty speck of this stuff. And I was puking, 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 puking all freaking day. It was awful. Then I started hanging out with them more and more and more and I kept doing it more and more and more. And I had no idea like I knew what drug addiction was, but I had no idea that you like get sick if you don't have drugs and all that type of stuff. So all of that was a very rude awakening. Now some time has passed. We're into 2012 now. When you're addicted to a drug, it can take over your whole life and that's exactly what it did. It took over everything. Selling all my stuff, he was selling all of his stuff. We were going to the pawn shop every day. We were freaking finding metal on the side of the road and going and scrapping it to get money. It was freaking awful. Now we're coming up to my first arrest. We're out of things to sell. We didn't have anything else to pawn. We couldn't find anything to go scrap. We had no money and we were sick, mind you. I really don't want to tell this story because I'm such a terrible person. Well, I was such a terrible person at this time. No morals, no empathy, nothing because I was just a shell that was running on drugs. It was awful. But yeah, so we were trying to figure out how to get money so we could go and get drugs. Common misconception about drug addicts. People think that drug addicts go out and get drugs so they can get high. And that's how it is at first, yes. But as time goes by and your body becomes physically dependent on this stuff, it becomes much more than getting high. As a matter of fact, 
after you do it for so long you don't even get high anymore it's not even about that it is just about not throwing up everywhere not having horrible stomach cramps not dying that's what it feels like it feels like you are dying i have no idea how i thought of this we were sitting in my house my mom was at work my dad was at work it was just me ben and tom and i got this idea i went into my mom's room and i found some old checks now these checks went to a bank account that had been closed since like the 90s or something they didn't even have an account at that bank anymore i have no idea how this worked on atms there are check deposit. So basically what we did was we took these checks that were forever old to a closed bank account and I filled them out for a certain amount of money, signed my mom's signature, and then I had this car that took like $13 out of my mom's check every week. She gave it to me in case I like needed food or something while I was out and it was for over-the-counter medications or you know kind of like an insurance thing. So I had this crappy card and I had these checks this closed bank account and we went to the ATM. We go to the check deposit, we put the check into the ATM onto the card that I had, then immediately we took the money off of the card and it worked. This bank account was closed, we weren't even at the bank that the checks were for. I have no idea how this worked. So we start doing this every single day. No one's saying anything. My mom's not saying anything. No sign at all that this is happening to anybody except us told you it was gonna be a long one so no one knows that we're doing this and we're doing this every day to get money to get drugs so then this one day we go to do this we put the check into the ATM we go to take the money out and it won't work so we tried again and again and again and it's not working then the next day we go back to the ATM and the ATM says that on this card is like $9,000 or something freaking insane. Mind you, I'm like freaking 17 or something and that's a lot of money. And I'm like, oh no. So you know what I did? I'll tell you what I did. I told on myself. <laughs> I called my mom and I was like, okay, look, this is what I've been doing. Now this is happening. I don't know what to do. So my mom's like, I'm gonna call the bank. All the while, I'm sitting here thinking like, we're gonna go to jail, we're gonna go to jail. There's no way we're not going to jail, blah, blah, blah. The next day, my mom comes home from work and she's like, yeah, I talked to the bank, but the only way for me to not have to pay this money is to file a police report. I was like, mom, if you file a police report, we're probably gonna go to jail. I just have the best mom in the whole world. I have no idea why she didn't want me to go to jail. But yeah, she was like, no, 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 you're not gonna go to jail. This is your first time ever being in trouble. It's fine, don't worry. The next day she comes home from work. I filed a police report. The police wanna talk to you. And I'm like, mom, we're gonna go to jail. And she's like, oh no, 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 no. It's just, it's your first time being in trouble. You're fine, you're fine. They just wanna know your side of the story, see what happened. A couple days go by and I get a call. So me and Tom were together when this happened and they called me first and then they called him. We're sitting in a car or something, my phone rings, I answer it and it's detective so-and-so. Detective so-and-so is like, the police officer that did this police report did it all wrong. He's new, he doesn't know what he's doing, can you just come in so we can just talk and get this all straightened out. Now he did not know that me and Tom were together at the time so immediately after he calls Tom same thing can you please come in so we can figure this out so I call my mom and I'm like hey mom we're going to jail and she's like no 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 they just want to talk by the way they never just want to talk okay the next day comes we show up and we go to talk to this guy and he splits us up and takes us into an interrogation room I went first okay Marina why did you do it and I said money I wanted money that's it then he was like, okay, go out there, have a seat. We're going to talk to your boyfriend and get you all out of here. I was like, oh my God, we're not going to jail. Thank God. I'm sitting right next to the door. I'm not in handcuffs, nothing like that. I'm sitting right next to the exit waiting for him so we can go. And two seconds goes by and the door opens, not in handcuffs, a zip tie. They had his hands zip tied. Okay, Miss Burks. Your boyfriend here says that you were doing this for drugs, so you're under arrest, hands behind your back, blah, blah, blah. And now we're going to jail. Now, if you do not know me personally, you need to know that I am four foot 11 inches tall, okay? I have like never weighed over 100 pounds. I am little tiny, and now I'm going to jail. Terrified. 
absolutely terrified. They take you to the drunk tank and that is where you sit until you are booked in and ready to go upstairs to general population. So I'm sitting there in the female drunk tank and he is sitting in the male drunk tank. There's a window and I can see through this window into a guy drunk tank. So I'm just like standing there and it's freezing and they took like all of my clothes. So all I have is like a tank top and some like thin pants. I am freezing. I am terrified. I don't know what's going on. It was awful. So they have a phone in the drunk tank. You can like call your whoever to get them to come get you out. So I called my mom and I'm like, hey mom, I'm in jail. And she was crying and she was like, I know. And I was like, can you come get me? Like I was crying. I was so scared. And she said, I can't come get you because your bond is $750. Technically, it was $7,500 court cash. Court cash means only 10% of that, which makes it $750, which is still a butt ton of money, and she couldn't get me out. So now I'm really freaking panicking, and I get off the phone with her, and I'm like, oh my god, what the heck do I do? And then I see, in the male drunk tank, I see Tom walking out. Maybe they're asking him questions, whatever. So I'm watching, they bring out this tub and they start giving him his clothes and he's putting his clothes on and I'm like, what the heck is going on? And he walked right out the door. Good for him, he's getting out, but like, I felt abandoned. I felt like he just ditched me because his family had money. They had $750, my family didn't. So the first time that I was arrested, I was in there for a week. I had to stay in there until my mom got paid and she got me out. Thank God. This first time when I got out, it was the best feeling in the world. Everything was beautiful, like the grass, the sky, a bird, like everything. I had a whole new respect for everything. So about a month later, we're coming up on my first court date. So my first arrest, I was charged with six C felony forgery charges. This is my first time ever being in trouble and I've got felonies, felonies, six of them. I get bonded out and a month goes by. We're coming up on this first court date. Had a public defender at the time. So I walk up to the prosecutor's office and I'm talking to my public defender. He was like, I've got some bad news for you. When I got here, they informed me that you have a warrant for burglary. And he's like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna walk down to the courtroom and I'm gonna talk to the judge and I'm gonna try to get them to not take you to jail for this. He was gonna try to get me OR'd, which is basically of the judge trusting you to come to court so they let you go without having to go to jail. We go to the courtroom. I didn't know that this happened at the time. My dad had noticed that he was missing a garbage bag full of aluminum cans. So the burglary charge is what he filed against me because of these aluminum cans. So my mom was livid and she was like, you know, cussing him out in the courtroom on the phone with him. It was a whole big mess, but I didn't have to go to jail and they let me go. August. August is when arrest number two comes in. Again, me and Tom, we're still talking. We're still addicted to these drugs. It was August 23rd that arrest number two happened. We couldn't find anything that day. We didn't have any money or there was something like that. So we were sick and we drove to this little place called the forestry. And it's basically just a big like state park type thing. And we're just sitting in his truck, his truck. Remember that we're just sitting in his truck. He was trying to do some things some sexual things. And I was sick, I was dying, I was very confused as to why he was trying to do these sexual things when we were sick and dying. And I was like, no, no, I'm sick. Right about that time, we hear a boom, boom, boom on the window. It's the conservation officers. And they are basically just like police officers for this little park area. So they're banging on the window and they're like, what are y'all doing here? Y'all have been sitting here forever, blah, blah, blah. And we hadn't, by the way, we were there for 10 minutes tops. And they said that they had been watching us for hours and we were sitting there and you know, they were like, what are you doing? Um, so they get us out of his truck. They search the truck and I'm like, well, we're good. We don't have anything. We're sick. We don't have anything. We're good. And lo and freaking behold, yeah, they find something in Tom's pocket. So he wasn't sick, I was sick. So they find that 
and they're asking him questions, they're asking me questions, they got us separated. They were asking me if basically if I was prostituting myself, you know, are you sleeping with this guy for drugs? And I was like, no, no, he's my boyfriend. And they start asking Tom, who's drugs? So he's saying, no, she doesn't know anything about it, they're mine, she doesn't have anything to do with it, blah, blah, blah. He's telling them this, I'm telling them the same thing, I had no idea that he had them, blah, blah, blah. They were just going to arrest him and they were having me call somebody to come and pick me up and then as soon as he finds out that he's about to be arrested he says oh no they're hers they're hers blah 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 no no they're not mine i didn't know da, da, da. so they arrested both of us now keep in mind that i now have this is the third case and because those other cases were still going and were not resolved yet that means no bond which means no getting out. Case number three, arrest number two, I uh, was charged with possession of a narcotic within 1,000 feet of a public park and D, felony, maintaining a common nuisance. Now, there is maintaining a common nuisance and visiting a common nuisance. Maintaining is when drugs are found in your house in your car that type of thing this was tom's car so really i should have been charged with visiting and he should have been charged with maintaining but whatever it's the same thing d felony boom so this is where most of my jail time comes in i was in there from august 23rd to december 19th this time was a lot different than the first time. I had no idea when I was gonna get out, had no idea what I was gonna be sentenced to. I could be looking at prison time. I had no idea what was going on and it was awful. Oh yeah, I was in there for a good chunk of time. So now let's just talk about what it is like in jail. One of the first things that I noticed about jail was that they had a way to do everything and this was all stuff that they're not supposed to do you know there were drugs there there was communication between the females and the males in their separate pod right now i want to talk about a couple of the interesting things that they do in jail how they communicate between the male pod and the female pod is they have this thing called the snake a ziploc bag that is attached to a very long string and the other end of the string is tied on a battery. How this pod was set up, there's the male pod over here, and then there's a door connected to the male pod, and then there is a hallway, door, female pod. So they throw the battery under the door, and the guy will see the battery, and he'll pull on it, and he pulls the bag under the door the whole string and everything and there will be like letters from the girls to the boys or food or whatever and they would fill it up with their response letters or whatever and slide it back underneath the door and the female would pull it through and that's how they did that now about the drugs and there were drugs there the way that they would get drugs in there were these people called trustees so they would bring the food in they would clean the outside of the jail that type of thing but what they would do the people in the jail would call call somebody somebody from the outside would come up to the jail and drop a bag somewhere like in a trash can or behind a big leaf you know that type of thing they would drop the bag outside of the jail and then the trustees would go outside find it and then bring it in with the food trays or something and of course there are also crooked guards and that would bring drugs in so now let's talk about holidays so the first holiday that i spent in jail was halloween you know it jail was really bad at first i was crying every single day but after you know the first month goes by the second month goes by you start to just become accustomed and you adapt and that's what i did so halloween not everybody did it but people would actually dress up you know we had um like these green jumpsuit type things we had like white t-shirts we would make makeup out of stuff you know we would dress up and then we would walk around in the pod cell to cell and people would give you snacks or candy or whatever you wanted and there are great big cells for people who are disabled or something there's more room in there they actually built a haunted house in that cell and we would walk through there and everybody would be dressed up and scare us so next we have thanksgiving the holidays they are sad in jail it feels like your life is halted your life is stopped 
for right now. And the rest of the world outside is just going. They're still going. And it's like the world is going on without you. It's very depressing. It can be very lonely. So Thanksgiving, what they did was they made us uh, basically the jail version of Thanksgiving foods. And that was pretty much it for Thanksgiving. There are a lot of people in there that spent their birthday in jail. I don't know how it is in the guy pod. I'm sure it is a lot different. Females, most of them were very nurturing and they, they were very, very sweet to me because I was young, I was small. A lot of them said that I reminded them of their daughters, like that type of thing. So I was pretty taken care of in jail. So birthdays, what do they do on your birthday? Um, so of course there are jail cakes, there's jail fudge, you know, you can make pretty much anything with like commissary items. Somebody, hopefully, would make you a cake and then you would get gifts. And of course, it's not like the freaking new iPhone and crap, no. It's like a honey bun, a pack of ramen, that type of thing. Now, this next part. I don't know how to explain this. I don't know how to explain this. Basically, my whole life, I have been atheist. And when I was in jail, I was in a room with the church people. They would do like this prayer group and all kinds of stuff and I wasn't religious. After my birthday, I got a visit from my lawyer. Every time that I had seen him, he was saying, oh yeah, we're gonna get you out before Halloween. We're gonna get you out before Thanksgiving. We're gonna get it. And it never happened, of course. That we're coming up on Christmas. And he came in and he said, I am so sorry, but the prosecutor, it's in his hands now and he's taking a long time. We're not gonna be able to get you out for Christmas. I am so sorry. So after I got done with him, I went back to my cell and I climbed up on my top bunk and I cried. I cried so hard. This was, I think, one of the first and only times that I ever prayed. I had like this jar that was like a prayer jar. So you write down your prayer, you put it in the jar. I was writing it down and I was praying and I was like, God, please, please help me. Like I was crying. I was praying with my whole being for the first time in my life. Please, please get me out of here before Christmas, please. Some time goes by, a couple days, see December 19th. That was the day. The 19th, bright and early, like freaking eight in the morning. We're all sleeping. This guard comes in and he screams my name. Everybody went by last names in there. So he screamed, Burks. And I was asleep, so I didn't hear him. So this girl comes in and she wakes me up and she's like, like Mo, you gotta get up, you gotta get up, you're getting out. And I was like, what the heck are you talking about? And they're like, yeah, they called you for court, you're getting out. And I didn't freaking believe her. I did not believe her. I got myself ready for court anyway, and they came and got me for court. So when you go to court in jail, you are in your jumpsuit, hand shackled, feet shackled, like just penguining along. And my lawyer's talking to me and he was like, you're getting out today. And I wasn't acting excited. And he was like, do you realize that you're getting out? It just wasn't clicking for me. So we go into the courtroom and I get sentenced and I'm getting released. And I'm like getting all of my stuff together. Meanwhile, my mom is downstairs waiting for them to release me. And we're talking on the phone. I'm calling her cell phone. And she was like, yeah, they're waiting on this paper. Okay, so I hang up and I'm still getting my stuff together. Now I've got everything ready. I'm ready to go. And I called her again and I was like, hey, have you heard anything? And she's sobbing. She was like, this pink paper, they can't find the pink paper. They have to send the pink paper, blah, blah, blah. Pink paper. My SD card ran out of space. I told you it's gonna be a long one. So yeah, they bring me downstairs. Now I'm in the drunk tank, waiting to be officially released. I'm waiting for paperwork, that type of thing. I call my mom from the drunk tank and I'm like, hey, I'm downstairs. I'm getting ready to get out. And she is still sobbing. And she's like, no, they're saying they can't let you out because this paper, they say you're not getting out today. They keep telling me you're not getting out, blah, blah. She's crying, she's freaking out. Now I'm freaking out because I'm like downstairs ready to go and now I might not get out. Um, after a couple minutes, gave me my paperwork everything was good and they're leading me out the door to go leave and when I get downstairs my mom is sitting there next to the door and she's just crying sobbing uncontrollably the people the people in the window and they will do this they will lie to you so 
watch it if anybody goes to jail. But yeah, they were telling her while I was being released, while I was being taken downstairs, while I was putting my clothes on and leaving, they were telling her I was not going to get out. I am still livid about this. Oh well, I got out and getting out was so weird. It didn't feel real. It was insane. Like when we were leaving, she was like, oh God, do you want anything to eat? Do you want to go get some like real food? And I didn't because I was just happy to be out. And also I was car sick because I hadn't been in a car in like freaking five months. And yeah, that was it. I was sentenced to four years of probation, which was completed and what completed in like 2016. There was a couple relapses in between then and now, but now I'm good. I'm good. Everything is great. I have no cravings, nothing like that. Everything is great. So I really hope that if someone is watching this and they are struggling with addiction, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and you can get through it, I promise you. And I hate to sound really cliche, but I honestly believe that jail saved my life. I don't know if I would be here right now telling you this story if I wouldn't have gone to jail. So yeah, it sucked and there were some really bad times, but there were also some really good times and I met some really good people and I'm very thankful for all of it. I'm just glad that I made it out to the other side because I have a lot of friends that didn't. You know, people think that when they're using drugs, the only person that they're hurting is themselves, And that's what I thought too, but it's not. You're hurting everyone that cares about you. Even if you feel like no one cares about you, they do. And when you use drugs, you're hurting them. And it's a terrible, vicious cycle. Addiction is oh god I could go on forever a very painful and sick thing and I really wish that it didn't exist but it does as you can overcome it I promise you if I can do it you most definitely can but yeah that's all I've got for you today I really hope that you enjoyed it if you all want to see anything um, regarding my addiction probation anything like that let me know in the comments below or on the waddle Thank you all so, so, so much for watching. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, join the Waddle on Facebook, and I very much hope to see you in the next one.